Hey guys, David from Dash Off-Road. We're here at Eddy to talk about GVM upgrades because uh, it's not hard with Y62s to go over your GVM, which is 3.5 tonne. Essentially, if you do front bar, rear bar, sliders, bash plates, roof rack, long range tank, you're on three and a half tonne straight away, which is the GVM. So as soon as you go to sit in your car, you're over. Um, there's heaps of questions and, and watch all the Facebook forums. Uh, the questions being asked and there's always you know I guess uh, uh, keyboard warriors answering what they are and we get different answers every time people ask these questions so what we're going to do is get to the bottom of it we've got Stuart Crozier here from Tonkins Consulting who does all the engineering for all the Y62s here at 4x4 DNA and this is a great opportunity to um, I guess ask those questions and get the answers from the horse's mouth Thanks for coming on uh, Dash Off Road YouTube channel. My pleasure, Dave. How are you? Excellent. So, I guess to start with, um, we, we often see cars from interstate and we're not sure, we haven't been certain in the past what the rules are. A GVM upgrades, is this a state thing or is it a federal based thing? It can be either. So, obviously, the manufacturer quotes the GVM. Um, if everyone looks on their car, there's a compliance plate on the Y62, it's yep. the white one on the passenger side B pillar. That's got a GVM, which is the certified maximum mass the vehicle can be. It's, it's specified by the manufacturer. It has to allow the vehicle to carry a payload designated by the number of seating positions and an allowance for luggage. And obviously, hopefully a bit extra payload so you can tow things and, and accessorize the vehicle. Mm -hmm. So in terms of that GVM, that is a federal process. The manufacturer provides that when they certify the vehicle as meeting the Australian design rules and obviously the, the big rule that the GVM affects is the braking performance of the vehicle. Yep. So if it's got a compliance plate, that's federal. And you'll see that some vehicles and some manufacturers will offer uh, federally approved kits, referred to as a second stage. Yes, I've heard of that before. And they then fit a second compliance plate, which means that the first stage manufacturer has approved the vehicle federally, mm -hmm. and then the second stage manufacturer has approved the modifications federally. Okay. Now that can only be done when a vehicle is brand new and never yet delivered. Okay. So once it's got number plates on it, Mm -hmm. the federal system no longer applies. So I've seen that with Land Cruiser 200 79s, they get yep. the second stage manufacturer GVM upgrade before Rego, and that gives them bonuses for um, luxury car tax and all that sort of thing. It, it can, so the luxury car tax is a very uh, misunderstood uh, issue, but effectively luxury car tax applies to luxury passenger vehicles and your Y62 is a passenger vehicle. Yes. So the only way luxury car tax doesn't apply is if it's a commercial vehicle. Mm -hmm. So it's not simply a case of upgrading the GVM and you avoid luxury car tax. It's a case that if the second stage also turns it into a commercial vehicle, such as making it a five-seater or making other changes that mean it no longer is a, a multi-seat passenger car, then it may be uh, available, but, um, but certainly yeah, in the case of a Y62 or even a Land Cruiser 200, simply changing the GVM doesn't mean you avoid federal taxes. So we can't get out of that one, sorry. Is there such thing as a second stage manufacturer for Y62s? Not that I am aware of. As of August 2021? <laughs> yep, so at this stage obviously you're, um, you fit the on-track um, mm -hmm. equipment and, and at this stage they haven't gone down that path. So what happens is that people effectively have to register the vehicle first and then it's treated as a state-based modification. State-based, okay. Correct. And all of the states have their, they accept the national rules. So Australian design rules are national standards. They are recognised by all states. A compliance plate is proof you meet those rules. So all of the states will ex expect you, if you're modifying a vehicle, to make sure it still meets those rules. Yep. But they've all got their own administrative processes. In the same way, we fit different number plates in South Australia to what you fit in Victoria and you pay your registration fees to different people. Yep. It's the same process when you modify your vehicle. If you're in South Australia, you have to engage with the South Australian authorities. If yes. you're in Victoria, you engage with the Victorian authorities. Are the rules the same for every state? Mostly. Mostly. 
And I say mostly because some states have permitted slightly different modifications to be done. Mm -hmm. So for instance, here in South Australia, you can raise a vehicle by 50 millimetres. Now that's 50 millimetres in total. It doesn't mean you can raise your suspension by 50 millimetres, yep. then put bigger wheels on, which raise the vehicle further, and yep, then sure. do a body lift, which raises it a bit more. <laughs> it's, not, it's not 50 millimetres here, plus two inch bigger wheels, plus something else. It's, it's gotcha. 50 millimetres in total. So they come out with a 32.6 inch tyre, so we can go up to a 34.6 inch tyre, or get a two inch lift, but Correct. not both. Correct. There is a proposal that has been put out nationally to accept a two inch lift and a two inch increase in wheel size or tire size. As yet, that hasn't been agreed to in all states. Some states are accepting of it. Other states are yet to make a decision, but even when they all agree, they then each have to make amendments to their own laws to accept it. Okay. And that's one of the confusions that some people might have heard of Vehicle Standards Bulletin 14, the new code of practice for modifying vehicles. That sets out a guideline, and it does actually include your 50 mil okay. lift and your 50 mil increase. But as yet, each state then has to actually pass those things into their own laws. Gotcha. Um, all right, so uh, it's a state-based thing. Does that mean that uh, I can have a car come from, I don't know, Northern Territory, Western Australia or Victoria and get uh, engineered here, because often that happens, they get our cars sent across on a truck, we'll do, we, we wish to do the GBM upgrade, can it get sent back to Victoria or Sydney or wherever? So effectively each of the states and territories have their own schemes for approving people to certify modifications. Mm -hmm. So in the case of South Australia, Victoria, Queensland and New South Wales, they actually have formal schemes yep. that you have to apply for. The other states will have uh, engineering signatories that they recognise. So I am a signatory here in South Australia, obviously. Yes. Um, I'm also a signatory in Victoria, New South Wales and Queensland through the fact I formally applied. So in your case, if you came here with a vehicle, I would have to use the system that is in place for the state of registration. So gotcha. if you had a vehicle come over from Victoria, then I would have to use the Victorian system. I would have to issue a Victorian light vehicle modification plate and a Victorian certificate and pay the Victorian certificate fees as gotcha. part of that process. There you go, if you're in Victoria, you can come over here and we can do all the work if you so choose. Um, so we can go up to a 4.085 ton GBM upgrade with the on-track kit. Um, yeah, add on the billet arms and the old man any suspension and uh, camera correction bushes. Got to that point, so that's great. What, can we just throw that on a car or do we need to have the weight on first? Effectively at the time the engineer inspects the vehicle, mm -hmm. one of the things I have to check is that you haven't exceeded the two inch lift. Gotcha. And obviously if you have fitted uh, heavy duty components, but the vehicle it was at standard Y62 mass with no accessories. It's gonna be it's much higher. Correct. And, and it all boils down to the two inch lift is measured at what is called the unlaid mass of the vehicle, which is defined as fixed accessories yes. and full yes. tanks of fuel. Oh, so you can't say, oh, but I'm gonna put in some tubs and a fridge and to cut a beer. No. And... Gotcha, so, so they're gonna be fixed. Things you can't remove and okay. a full tank of fuel is unlaid in mass. Not to be confused with tear mass. Tear mass has only got 10 litres of fuel. So sometimes people will see tear mass on their registration paper. The actual certified unlaid mass is with the tanks filled up. So there when you fit your, your long range tank of an extra 140 odd litres, mm -hmm. well you fill up the main tank, the sub tank and the long range tank. That's the unlaid mass of the vehicle that we'll yep. then use to measure the suspension height. Gotcha, okay, so we can't fit the heavy springs for the GBM upgrade unless you put on a Kmart or Razzler rear bar or unless you put on a long range tank that's physically bolted to it. Otherwise, you're gonna set it at too high, it'll end up being three inches higher and uh, it still won't pass it because it's more than a 50 mil lift. Uh, so this will give us, as we know, 4.085 tonne uh, to, uh, on the car. Will it increase our, our GCM you know, we've got seven tonne for the whole rig, say caravan and car, 
does it increase that as well? It doesn't, and it's it's something that um, is a misunderstanding a lot of people have. The, the GCM is set by the manufacturer as the maximum amount they want rolling down the road. And, and it's not a function of the suspension, it's a function of things like engine torque, things like cooling system capacity, the ability of the transmission to hold the correct gear when you're driving down the highway rather than hump backwards and forwards. Um, you know, the ability for the torque converter clutch to stay engaged so you're not overheating the transmission. So there are a lot of things that go into a GCM and the upgrading the GVM basically means that of the total, and if we use seven tonnes as the yeah. round number, more of that total can be in the vehicle, but the total doesn't change. So effectively, with your Y62, I think they let you tow three and a half ton behind yes. three and a half ton, yep. hence your seven ton. If you've made the GVM four ton, and you're gonna load it to that, yeah. well, you can only put three, three ton behind it. on the van, gotcha. Now, um, I get confused about this, and in the forums they do too, uh, if we, it says we can tow three and a half ton and the car is three and a half ton, but when I put the ball weight on, like if my car is already sitting at three and a half and then I put my 200 kilo ball, is that like added on or is that considered the caravan? It, it is considered as part of the caravan in terms of the total thing you're pulling. So park your caravan on the way bridge on a jockey wheel, that's got to be three and a half ton or less. Gotcha. Hitch it to the car. Yeah. And what is transferred to the tow ball is being carried by the car. Not the van. So whilst the total can be seven tonne, right. if 300 kilo of the seven has just been added into the car, you've got to make sure the car hasn't gone over the three and a half. Yeah, okay. And uh, Y62 owners that are watching this, if you've got a series one to four, you'll see on the inside of the door, there's a little placard that, that there's a, a penalty or a consequence for putting extra weight on the ball. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head. For example, if you go over 250 kilos on the ball, there's like a, an extra penalty uh, that comes off the GVM. So does that mean it's three and a half ton, less ball weight, less the penalty as well? Effectively, from a legal perspective, the the only thing under law is that you shall not exceed the fully loaded mass of the vehicle. So you're unlikely to get penalised by law enforcement unless you've exceeded the three and a half ton that is on the compliance plate mm -hmm. or you've exceeded the three and a half ton towing. That down rating that Nissan applied, and they did it on the on the, the GU patrols as well, I think once you got over 250, for ex every 50 extra you had to take 100 out of the vehicle. Yeah. It was Nissan identifying that the tow bar is back here, so 50 kilos on the tow bar actually adds more than 50 kilos to the back axle load. Gotcha. And if you think back to the days of the GU patrol, they all used to suffer from tearing the spring seats off the chassis. Yep. So I don't believe that's a known fault with the Y62. No. I think perhaps Nissan carried that over because they were being Just a bit conservative. <laughs> You've indicated that on the Series 5 they've deleted that sticker, so. Yeah, so it doesn't exist anymore. So it's three and a half tonne. Uh, I've been pulled over, my van's on, but they, the cop puts my, my car on the scales and it's weighing three and a half with 300 kilo on the ball. Am I in trouble or not? No, because basically if they, if they put the four wheels of your car on the scale with the van attached, provided it's not over three and a half, you're legal. Gotcha. And then, if they, and then if they pull the van forward and they weigh the wheels on the van, and that's not exceeding your seven ton total, then you're still legal. Right, that's going to make a lot of you guys happy out there. Uh, so we can do GBM upgrades, we can't do GCM, you cannot do a pre-reg because there's no second stage manufacturer. Um, this doesn't limit you all, you just got to think about how you're going to weigh uh, your caravan and your car. If you're going to go and buy a three and a half ton caravan, you've got to keep the car very light because the GBM is not going to help you at all. Um, what else are the I questions? Think, I think one of the other things you asked me once before is, and it does confuse people, is if you've had a Victorian registered vehicle certified in Victoria, yeah. to oh, yes. the Victorian rules, you can drive that vehicle anywhere in Australia. Excellent question. Even, even if perhaps South Australia may not permit a vehicle to have the same suspension height as Victoria or Queensland, mm -hmm. um, 
It's the state that it's registered in and the certification rules of that state that determine what it can have. Yep. You are then permitted to drive wherever you like, obviously obeying the road rules in the state that you're in. Mm -hmm. uh, some states may impose different speed limits depending on the total weight of a combination, so you need to abide by that. But in terms of the suspension rules, if you've come from Queensland and they, accept, if they allow you to have a 10-inch lift in Queensland and, and someone certified your 10-inch lift, well, it's not up to anyone in South Australia to say you can't yeah, have that. Because I've been worried that I'll get my car engineered here in Adelaide, but if I go to, the, to Land Cruiser Mountain Park, I might get pinned because they've got, you know, potentially stricter rules there. So it's... Uh, um, the, 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 the rules, the, the certification rules refer to the state of registration. We yeah. you use the vehicle is, is completely separate, so... Excellent. I think that has cleared up a hell of a lot of questions. So next time on Facebook, someone says, brings up the whole GVM issue, please refer them back to this video and we've got it all sorted out. Like it's done, stopped. Uh, we haven't talked about axle group mass, but maybe we'll do those smaller GVM upgrades in a separate video, because this was the hot topic for now. Thank you for your time. My pleasure, thank Much you. Much appreciated. Thank you for the chance to have a chat. See you next time on YouTube. Yeah, yeah.